Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of our stone finishes and we are going to be foiling some jeans. You didn't think I could get through a day without playing with foil, did you? Well, the answer is no, I can't. <laughs> but meanwhile, we had a live about an hour ago that finished, or I should say finished up about an hour ago and I was doing these stone finishes with plaster techs on one and our Artsyville texture medium on the other. I'm going to share what the two of the three came out and then we have the fourth one to finish. So we have this beautiful light kind of cementy finish done in the plaster text and I still love it. I mean, look at all those great details the plaster text gives with that dark aggregate that's in there. And then we just did color washes to get it light. Texture medium built up to a sharper texture. Hey, Barb. Hey, Rima. So our plaster, our texture medium built up to a sharper texture on here, but we also washed it with darker colors, meaning that, that will make all of those details pop. Um, I think I accidentally uh, stuck my finger right there and didn't wash that little bit of color down. So yeah, I don't love that spot. So guess what? I just went back over it with my fingers. And this is actually pretty cool too. Um, and I will share this because I've forgotten this technique. Hang on a second. So color washes and glazes can be a little fragile, especially when they're fresh. So um, one of the cool things I used to do a lot, I haven't shown it in a while, which is why I probably forgot about it. We're going to flip the camera down to our sample. So this one is our texture medium, Artsyville texture medium, that I did color washes over. So this is already a great finish. But if I don't like this, I think it's too dark, I can come back with cheesecloth or a rag once all of this, these washes have dried. And I'm only gonna do this in one spot, so I want you to see what this does. And you see I'm scrubbing off the top layer of color. Oh wow, this came out so well. I like this even better than where we where I left it. I completely forgot how I used to do this because I haven't done this finish in a while, so I'm very happy. So you can see all that color I took off. Now look at that killer embedded color texture. It looks even more stony. I hadn't done this one. I had so forgotten about this because it's been so long since I did. I'm really liking this. And the texture medium, understand, text, you need a product that dries hard to take this kind of scrubbing. Um, and our texture medium really does a great job. Boy, this is what I was aiming for. And I'm like, I couldn't remember how I got to it. And then I got to it by mistake the last couple times that I did it too. That's a great looking thing. I knew there was something I was forgetting that I really, and the other, don't get me wrong, the other one was a great finish for what it was, but this is the finish that I had been trying to get to and I'd forgotten how I got there. So I scrubbed all that back, which then makes all those little high spots lighter. It lightens up the finish, but it also gives it a lot more authenticity because over time, things wear off the top and embed down in the crevices. All right, we're going to go into this one. And by the way, yes, I do carry this cheesecloth that you see me use. I carry it in bolts. It's sheets of 100 pre-cut lint-free. Lint-free cheesecloth, which is not easy to come by. It's pre-washed, pre-sized, pre-cut. Best cheesecloth on the market. Uh, I can say that with all humility because I used to buy it from somebody else. And when they retired, they gave me their source for the best cheesecloth I've ever used. So now I'm the one who carries it. <laughs> All right, so this is our other board that we did with texture medium. We did it and stippled it on. Hey, Heidi, how nice to see you, Barbara. Every, gosh, everybody's there. So um, get back to what I was doing, saying. We stippled on the first layer so it had, well, that's not the right board. So it had that basic texture underneath. Then we troweled and smeared on some more uh, plaster uh, texture medium on here to give it sort of a pitted look like old coral. And that's the look that we're going for. 
is an old, crusty, coral wall, think Florida kind of sea walls. But the first thing I need to do is sand this down a little bit to get rid of some of my methods of application because if you watched me earlier, you would have seen that I was actually smearing this on here with my fingers. Uh, why? Because this is an awkwardly placed, uh, the texture, it's got a lot of, it's hard to trowel smooth. I'm sorry, I'm stuttering today. It's hard to trowel smooth on a curved surface. So I got went in with my fingers. Sorry, I'm getting the chunks off the back so they don't, you know, grab my hands as I'm doing stuff. Um, so I troweled on some more over here, smoothed it over, and I'm not looking for a perfect, flawless, machine-tooled finish because why? It's hand-painted. We're working on an old, the idea of an old coral wall. So I'm gonna take my spray bottle, which is here. Miss the entire surface. Uh, why do I do that? Because it allows for looser moisture. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go in here with my Earth Brown, uh, the looser moisture. I don't even know if you understood what I said there because I was distracted and starting to think about my next steps. So, um, the, the wetness helps disperse the color. So I'm taking a little tiny detail brush and taking a little bit of the earth brown that I dabbed here and I'm going into the pitting. Now, you don't have to do it with a little brush. You can do it with a bigger brush. Um, depends on the size of your surface. I mean, this is not a very practical brush to use if you were doing this on an entire wall but it's perfect for a chair arm or a chair leg. I'm seriously considering taking over my son's bedroom furniture again. Um, I've repainted it three times since he was a baby. thinking I might have to do it a fourth just to lighten it up because he's in a very small studio apartment and having uh, the furniture a lighter color might be nicer for him. Okay, So as you can see I've spread that color in the areas that are pitted and the reason for that is I want to make the pitting stand out more. And really, I'm gonna be building on this particular finish, I'm gonna be building color from the pitting in. So, I mean, already look how nice that is taking into those pits, but it's kind of flat looking. You know, we don't have any concentration of color and detail on here yet. So the next thing I'm doing, um, you're gonna say, ooh, that's red. Why, why would I take red? Well, there's a reason. A lot of coral, especially when I was growing up, we used to go to Bermuda. My dad had business to do down there. And uh, I'll take a little white too. Um, the beaches down there were actually pinkish. We stayed at a place called Pink Beach because the coral was really and truly pink. And so the sand would have a pinkish cast to it. And that's sort of what I'm going for. And the pink is really, it's not like a fuchsia-y pink. It's really got a little bit of a peach tone to it. So adding white to basic faux cream red works just fine. So all I'm gonna do is kind of go into some of these crevices and pink, add a little pink into the edges. And Now, granted, I, I see that this looks spotty like this. I understand that. We're gonna fix that. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of pink and we've got a little bit of earth brown in there. We're going to take 
a little asphaltum transoxide and probably a little bit of white. My, my bottle of faux cream color white is really old and that's why it's a little drier, it's settled. Don't worry about that. You buy them, they don't come like that. They just, when you have big bottles that sit around for a long time, they can do that. Okay, I'm making a very pale brown wash. Again, I want to wet my surface. Cloth. I got a lot of puddle right in the middle there, the, the deepest part. And that's not really what I want. so careful not to get it in everything and now you're going back at it like that. Yes, I am. Yes, I am because that's how I'm going to get the look that I want. Oh, there's my last piece of cheesecloth from that roll. Now you can start to see that the pits are starting to look more realistic in here. You're starting to get more detail and more depth in the coloring. I want to get into this in here a little bit because it's not grabbing all of those ice, those low spots the way I want it to. Sort of took some of that out. dabbing some color on that I didn't mean to. Oh no, I guess I'll just have to wipe it back and make it part of the finish. This is one of the great things with finishing is that <laughs> even when you screw it up. And how did I get that color on there? I threw my brush on the earth green that was sitting over here. And I like doing this with color washes versus glazes because believe it or not, I actually have a little more control when I do the color washes. It doesn't look it, but the glaze is thicker and it's heavier and it kind of wants to eat into stuff or bite into and bond harder and then dry. Whereas this, I can just sort of smear it around, wipe it back, and I'm just leaving little deposits of stuff around. That was a little earth brown that I messed with. I figured since I got it on here, I might want to um, pay a little more attention to how I got it on here. Let's get that bright red spot right there out of the way. All right, and I do want to go back in with a little more pink into a couple spots. because I kind of made it go away. Not a lot. You're almost not going to see this. This is going to be just a little bit of detail. So we've got all this brown on here, but I really want to take just a little white. Plain white, not any other color added to it. So watch your color messes over on the side like I have to. Because I just want to pop in the white a little bit. Because I don't want this to go too beigey. And coral gets very bleached out in the sun. So you want to make sure you're white. You have some white on there that's really, really nice and white. And if you're really not sure, 
what color coral is, go Google Pictures. Um, personally, I, I grew up spending so much time at beaches. I was very fortunate. My dad traveled a lot for work, so he would uh, make a lot of his business trips, family trips with my sister and me and my mom. So I got to see a lot of very cool stuff. And coral can look very, very white, or it can be very, very mottled in the stones, depending on the mineral content of the water near, near it and what's happening with weather and rain and things like that. I know that's a lot of who shot John, but it helps to know. Because I've actually had a client or two who said, well, I want it coral, but I want it the coral that's like my fence outside of my house. Well, you're gonna have to send me your, <laughs> I've had people send pieces of their broken coral wall. I've had, I've had people send me, you know, photographs. Quite frankly, the, having the piece of coral wall was probably the help, most helpful. All right, so you can see I have a toothbrush here and I'm just dipping it in water and then dipping it into this wonder why. Well, because again, like I said, our coral, my, I'm basing it a little bit on pink beach coral, although this is not as white and pink as that was. So to get that last little bit of pink in there, I'm fly specking. And to do that, you just take a toothbrush, dip it in some paint and some liquid, just enough so that it's liquidy enough to spatter. But do a, your first spatter off your project because the first one's always the one that's going to give you a big random blob in some strange place that you're not going to be happy about. And really all I'm trying to do is just put a few pink specks on there and see I almost got too much right there. So I might have to actually come in. Just try to get a little more. I gotta have one heavy speck spot. And then where I don't like that heavy speck, I'm just pouncing it out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so here we go. Here is our coral finish now. My pitting on here is subtle. My coloration is very modeled. You can adjust this as ever, however you want. You can see my little bit of pink fly specking in there to imitate the grains. I'm very happy with this. We have smoother parts here. And once this dries and is less shiny, it'll be nice and matte and it will look more like stone. That's gonna make me very, very happy. All right, we're gonna push all of those samples to the side. We finished that one. What are we gonna do next? Why, we're gonna foil some jeans. So I'm gonna give all of this mess to my charming assistant across the table. A charming assistant. Yep. Would you wash my brushes and take this board, please? Charming assistant. So, come on. <laughs> so you all hear my charming assistant in the background. That's my son. He is such a good person. He's a much nicer person than I deserve as a child for my house. Okay, so we're gonna flip back down here. Um, I think I need another board to work on just because it'll help better. This works better with a dark surface, just so you can see what I am doing. All right, I'm gonna put these extras over here, and we're gonna start working one at a time. 
Now, normally I would have this whole thing weeded out, but this is a very, believe it or not, a very simple pattern. Now, this is our new vinyl foil adhesive, trans heat transfer adhesive, and it's really easy to work with, super user friendly. And I just, I cut this design a couple days ago and I didn't weed it because when you pull the backing off, the backing stays sticky to help you mount it to the clothing. Now I did a full video, Jesus, Saturday and Friday on how this, you put this through your, your cutter, how you um, design your pattern, where you get your, you can get patterns. We have pre-cut patterns available. So if you don't have a cutter, um, you have, I think about 15 options to choose from on our website. Just, there's actually a whole section called heat transfer vinyl adhesive, but if you cannot find it easily, um, just go under foil adhesive and it'll pop up. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm pulling off all of the white stuff. And what this white stuff actually is, this is your adhesive. The white, this stuff is the adhesive. It will, when, you'll see how it melts to the clothing once we hit it with an iron. So I gotta pull all this up, but I weeded really, really complicated ones at home. Um, and I was just trying to keep the ones that are basically a single overlay uh, with not a lot of hard to weed details. I just left it alone and that's what this is. This is not a complicated pattern. Actually, most of it weeds out as I'm pulling out around the edges and then I'll just have a little bit to deal with. But since there's no begin and end point for the inside and the outside, as you can see these vines, they're all just sort of intertwined and open. So there was nothing at home for me to weed out on this. I just said, I'll do it live. You all can see what the weeding looks like. And by the way, if you don't know what the term weeding is, um, weeding is pulling out the extra stuff. It's like you're weeding your garden. You're removing the stuff you don't want. So that's why it's called weeding. pulling out the parts of the design that are irrelevant to what you're doing. Um, you can use a picking tool. I have like half a dozen of these little black tweezers. They all came when I ordered crystals. You can use all kinds of stuff. I usually, and before I had the tools, you know, I went out and purchased them. I use safety pins and tweezers, like bat regular old bathroom tweezers. They work just fine. I just needed something with better handles because my hands did not like the way it worked with, for me, with smaller tools. It was an awkward grip for me because I have you know, arthritis in my hands after doing all this stuff for so many years. I need a little bigger tool that had a better grip on it for me. It's not what everybody else needs. Right. We're just pulling out the center of these leaves. And when I do a lot of little tiny picking designs, I keep a piece of tape around and stick all the little tiny bits on it for something like this. It's big, it doesn't need that. I'm peeling off pieces of adhesive that are substantially larger, so it's not a battle. So today, one of my favorite older movies came on movie called Beautiful Girls with Uma Thurman and Timothy Hutton and Annabeth Gish and oh god a whole whole lot of other Rosie O'Donnell was in it there are a whole bunch of really charming actors in this and 
all I can say is it reminded me of my time in Syracuse. Cold, gray, a lot of bars, a lot of people trying to figure out, you know, where their life is going, a lot of questionable choices. <laughs> but that's, I love watching it because it's a time that I grew kind of past now, thank goodness. But it was incredibly a big formative time in my life. All right, so all this stuff is crapola. It gets thrown to the side. Meanwhile, my uh, adhesive stuff is blowing off to the front. All right, so let me pull out my first pair. These are a pair of cutoffs that I made from Studio Jeans. So if I, and, and they've got paint and crud all over them. So I always start with the worst pair of pants that I have so that if I screw them up, I'm not gonna feel bad. All right, which side is worse and messier? This side is worse and messier. Okay, so now I'm going to mount the vine here. Actually, I wanna mount them a little higher because I do tend to roll up the cuffs on these and I don't wanna lose the whole pattern when I roll it up. Get the, now it's, this is sticky still. So this helps this bond pull down on your fabric when you're about to do this. Okay, I'm gonna pull my piece of, which one, what foil am I gonna use? You need to use fabric foil friendly adhesive. This is fabric foil friendly, or fabric friendly foils. Um, not all the foils on our website are good for fabrics. They're not machine washable, they're not flexible, they will not hold up well. However, we have them marked. It will say, fabric friendly or not fabric friendly on the uh, ordering. So you will not um, not know which ones are, if it does not, specifically if it does not say this is good on fabrics, don't buy it. Um, if you have any questions on whether or not it can be used on fabrics, call me, message me, email me. That's what I'm here for. Ah, sorry, I need a little slurp of iced tea. All right, now I've got my iron heating up to the side. This was just a basic vine pattern that I picked out from my Cricut Maker subscription. Um, when you have a Cricut Maker, it will come with some preloaded stuff, and then you have the option to subscribe to their, um, I don't know, their library. And it's really, really helpful. Um, I've made a ton of stuff from their library. I've created a ton of stuff on my own. Um, I'm sorry, I was just testing my iron to see if it's hot enough yet. And it's getting there. All right, so this is my iron. And as you can see, each time I do this, I've cleaned more stuff. This is where I actually got it too hot and melted not just... <laughs> The adhesive, I mounted the foil onto my iron. So don't do that. Fortunately, it's non-stick, so each time it heats up, I can just clean more of it off. When we start with this, you notice I can set it down on my clothing even though it's been started. You're going to start with the lowest setting. Everybody's iron is different. I started with synthetic. I know that my iron is not gonna get hot enough on synthetic to melt this. So the next thing is I go to silk. And now I'm set on silk and I'm putting it on here. Um, and if you're doing lettering, you need to remember to mirror this. Anything that's directionally specific, you need to mirror because you're cutting, where's my stuff? My folder's under here somewhere. Here it is. All right, all right these are all my pre-cuts. I'm gonna use this one, you might see the pattern. If you want your design to face this way, when you lay it down, you have to cut it so it faces this way. Why? Because this is the side you put, the dull side goes down on the iron. So you definitely, definitely, definitely need to remember cutting dull side up and mirror anything that needs to be placed with a specific direction. 
All right, so you can see as I move my iron around, this is going from white frosty to clear. Now I can go up to, and I've played with this so I know, I can go up to wool on mine, which sometimes I needed given that like my air conditioning is blowing right on the surface in which I'm just moving it from that now. Um, I had, if my, if this cools down too quickly, it's hard to remove. So you want it good and melted and turned clear on here. And you need to remove this while it's still hot. Otherwise, it will string out and pull back or it won't stay bonded to the, uh, see that's not grabbing right there. This is why I always start off with doing something that I know <laughs> I'm not going to show anybody unless it peeks out under a piece of my own clothing. Because I might make a mess, and that happens. So. It doesn't take long for it to melt. You just got to make sure you've got it all melted onto what you want it to stick to. And that can take a minute and it can take a little bit of control. And, you know, I'm dealing with jeans which are lumpy. They have all kinds of pockets and rivets and seams and stuff. So that can make this release a little slower. And I'm okay with that. I just work on it until it's all melted. Um, if you're using a t-shirt press, set your t-shirt press to 325 degrees. It should take three to five seconds to release, but of course, like anything else, you're gonna have to figure that out as you go along. Also, when you're doing this on clothing, make sure, see now how you can see it's turning darker? That's really the best for me. That means that it's really coming off of here. The clearer and darker it turns, the happier I am. Um, so what I was saying a second ago is if, you are doing this on new t-shirts. Wash the t-shirts first, wash new jeans first. You wanna wash all that old sizing out. There we go. This just spot wants, just does not want to let go. It's a crabby little bit of stuff. And I watch this as I pull it to make sure everything's releasing. I'm not pulling it back with the film and there we go we got a good release excellent I had a couple problems up here because there's a couple wrinkles and puckers so it gave me a moment but you can see it's all off the back of the film all right so now I got my Jaguar pattern and I like using stuff like this these animal prints as almost textured. It looks like it would be, oh my God, look at all that Jaguar, oh my gosh. That's not how it releases. You barely see the pattern because those lines and everything are gonna be so fine. Okay, now if you're at all concerned about your temperature and melting foil on your iron, as I have done, Use a pressing cloth, use a piece of parchment paper, use something along those lines. I'm just checking to see if it's grabbing. Looks like it's grabbing. All right, we're gonna set those to the side and let it cool. Okay, so here's, I have three pairs of jeans with me. We're going to try some different stuff. Which are these? These are the boot cuts. So I actually have plans for each and every pair that I've brought. I just have to decide which one I want to do what on. And this one is what pair? These are the pairs of straight ones that are so short that I couldn't figure out why, and all of a sudden I realized that somehow I ordered a pair of petites. Okay, I'm not short enough for the petites. I'm not tall enough for the longs. Somehow I ended up with something for petites. 
Okay, so I think we are going just to do this one on here. Okay, this one is a beta that I had pre-cut. And as you can see, I weeded out most of the details so you don't have to sit here and watch me go through all of that. But I do have to pull the outside uh, because I didn't want it. It's, you know, like I said before, it gets sticky. So I don't want it sitting around get in a folder sticking to other stuff. I want it as preserved as possible. So I'll save the outline weeding until the last minute. This is going to be done in the Bailey's flowers. I think this is going to look just spectacular on here. I'm going to show you the two foils that I've got chosen to do this, and you all can pick. How about that? While I finish weeding this and doing the beta fish, I'm going to either do the blue tie dye or the Bailey's flowers. So you all let me know what you want. I will do either pattern. Oh my gosh, keep weeding, keep weeding. While I do the weeding, it gives you all a chance to submit your ideas. Is it going to be the Bailey's flowers or is it going to be the blue tie-dye? Woohoo! Okay, first of all, look how cute that fish is. I have one little spot right in here that just needs to be pulled up. First of all, look how cute that is. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm not seeing any votes. Okay, well, I'm gonna just keep on working here and then the final decision is gonna end up being made by me if you don't give me some ideas of which one you'd like to see. There is no wrong answer. I just thought somebody else besides me might like to choose. Then when you see me wearing them, you can say, I helped her pick that. Oops, no, nope, that's the wrong leg. I want the fish swimming in, not away. I want her towards the outer leg seam, and this is going um, down close to the cuff, because I want to have it. Ugh, I just did a dumb thing. I just threw this over on top of the rolls of foil. Didn't hurt it, <laughs> but it sure didn't help it. my pants leg here, get the dust off of it from dragging it across the floor. Okay, you guys are all leaving these decisions up to me. I didn't want to make a choice today. I thought you guys might like to make a choice. Oh no. All right, well, I'll make the choice. So here we go. Here is our beta fish mounted to the denim. Now this, these are the first time I did this on t-shirts and they, it works great. I have, this is my first time doing it with denim. So I'm learning the ins and outs of denim and denim can be tricky because it's a heavier material and it's more textury and it has bigger seams. So, all right. All right, somebody finally voted. All right, we're doing Bailey flowers, yay. We're gonna do Bailey's flowers. So I'm gonna grab a piece of that and have it cut off before I melt this adhesive. I like to work that quickly. Ugh. Once I get this on and off, I want the foil right on it. And of course, I didn't bring a pair of scissors over to the table with me, so I'm doing um, the sloppy cut with a pair of tweezers. Now, if you receive packages from us and you get a piece of foil that has an end like this, all rough, we actually measure back about a half an inch from the rough edge and give you the full measure plus a little extra um, because a I hate wasting foil by trimming off the raw edges and it gives you a little extra product so it's not a waste so everybody gets a little something out of that also when we do these any of the stencils I'm sorry any of these either pre-cut or you're buying the roll we include one of these little LED lights why because this is really hard to see the pattern even when you set it on dark on the, a dark surface which helps tremendously so you take the little led light and hold it down and it pops up the little white edges where the cuts are and makes it much easier to weave 
So you get that with every roll or with every pre-cut design from us. All right, let's see how I did here. I kind of messed up this piece of foil. That'll go back into the scrap box for later. So busy talking that I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing and that's going to cause a problem. What on earth did I do here? Okay. See, even I do weird things with my foil that I can't figure out how I did it. There we go. Let's put that over to the side. Now it's ready. Now I can come in here. And again, I am set to, on, today I'm set on wool. Why? Because it's working better for me than being set on silk. You need to check your own iron. Everybody's irons are different. I have a pants press, which is completely different settings, no matter what it says, than this are. This is when Jennifer Ferguson started doing hers, her iron was so, her original iron was so old, she would have to crank it up to get it hot enough to do anything for heat transfer. Then she got a new one and nearly set all of it on fire, just like I'm dealing with. My old iron was much, much, much cooler than my new one. And so I have to really pay attention to what I'm doing to make sure I don't melt plastic again to my iron. Now I'm moving this around. I'm putting a little pressure on it. I want to get as much melted and melted nice and clearly to the surface as possible because that's going to make for a better release later. For some reason I see a couple little bubbles under here and I'm just sort of jabbing at them with the iron. Now when you have a pattern as detailed as this you really have to weed, I, I mean, uh, roll this back carefully. Um, let's make sure I'm good and melted here. Okay, so because if this gets cold, it can start pulling the design and you won't be happy when that happens. So right here, I can see it's starting to pull a little bit. So I just want to warm it up. So I can roll it back a little easier. I don't want this to pull back and screw up the release so that then I don't get a great transfer of foil. All right, that released, you can see that released really nicely on here. This is really gorgeous. All right, Bailey's flowers. My other pair of jeans that I had done with a Bailey foil pattern on it kind of got trashed. So I'm very excited to have these. All right, and now we're just going to press the foil down. Now the cool thing with this way this works too is that you should be able to see the foil grabbing onto your fat a year pattern. Okay, and making sure I got the whole thing. I know I'm ironing a much bigger area than. Uh, my fish is on, but I don't want to take any chances of missing anything. And yes, this beta fish is on our pre-cut menu, so you can order it. Put that over to cool, and it should cool very quickly. All right, we're going to take one more pair of pants, and, and really the reason I'm doing the third pair of pants while you're watching is so that the first two items can cool off and we can peel the foil and you can see it. All right, this is another pair of jeans, obviously. Um, I worked out a couple designs that I wanted to put on the pant legs. Hey, Tor, would you grab me a pair of scissors over there? Orange centers, gray outer edges. That's it. Thank you. I know you're going to, somebody's about to say, wow, that was really specific on the kind of scissors you want. I have levels of scissors around my studio. And um, one of the levels is stuff, something that will actually cut through stuff. That's what these scissors are. A lot of my other scissors have been used 
for so many things besides um, cutting that they almost don't cut anymore. And I'm sure some of you have those scissors in your studio too. They almost, they, they've been used for everything except cutting. Pliers, all kinds of stuff. I, I mean, honestly, some of them, I'm not even sure why I'm calling them scissors anymore. They're not really scissors. They're just badly angled tweezers. again what I'm pulling off of here is adhesive so if I don't weed everything out I'm going to have glue in places on my pattern that I don't want so when you order these products from us you get a full set of instructions on how to use it how to care for the fabrics that you've used how to apply it, how to put it through your cutter, how to apply it to the surface. And then we always suggest, of course, that you go back to the videos to check. This is the reason we do these, because we know it's very possible for people to have a less than successful result without actually being able to see how this is used. Now, obviously my pattern's um, a little bigger than my pit leg. So I'm looking to see where, which way to shift. And then I'm gonna trim it a little right here. iron on here and let it melt and we're going to do our oops I got water on it that's not helpful do blue tie-dye foil on here because I think this is fairly universally friendly with at least most of my clothes Okay, so things are melting really, really well. I could just leave that there for a second. Now, I will remind everybody, even though I've said it before, do not put these clothes, they are machine washable still, do not put them in the dryer, do not iron them, do not dry clean them. Why? Because every time you expose the, the adhesive to heat, you're reactivating it. And eventually, it's going to become very brittle and it will crack and it'll chip off your clothes. If you just wash everything in cold water and line dry, you don't have that happen. Therefore, it doesn't become a problem. Okay, so we're peeling that all off nicely. I got a little pull off right there. That's okay, because I'm, they're just for me. I should have warmed up that end a little bit. This is right at this seam. This is where I did not get it to the seam well. So you're learning. This is what you need to avoid. If I make the mistake, then you don't have to. Okay, so now I'm putting this on here. I'm holding it down, putting a little pressure. Now, if you wanna know how wearable what I'm, I'm trying to create is, I didn't, if you all saw the other one I did the other day, I did my, a Cthulhu for my son's shirt. Um, he's wearing that shirt today, he loves it. Let me see if I can flip this up and see the camera the angled at him for you to see. See him let me flip it. Hey Tor, monkey, Tor. He's got headphones and I have to wake him up. I'm flipping the camera to you because I'm going to show everybody your Cthulhu shirt. And that's, there we go. Nice Cthulhu you're wearing, kiddo. I am very pleased with that. 
Let me see if I can get it zoomed into your shirt. And of course, it's not doing that. Never mind. That's the Cthulhu. All right, I'm going to flip this back towards me. All right. All right, we've had that down there. This should be well bonded to the jeans. We got one other leg to do, and then I'm going to flip everything. We'll pull all the foils. Put this back. Here we go. So all that time I was showing you my son's picture, I was also pressing on the pant leg with the iron. So I, I created a couple different patterns and designs so that the legs would be more interesting to look at. And then I, I reversed them, I mirrored them so that I can do them in a reverse on the other leg. So I actually did think about this a little bit, <laughs> but maybe not enough to judge the size. All right, so we're gonna flip down. So you can see, again, I'm a little bigger than my pant leg here. So I just need to measure it out and figure out where the design stops. And I think I did. I'm not even gonna bother to weed that. Since I already learned from the first one and I'll keep the extra vinyl um, to do repairs and patches if I need it. I don't throw out the vinyl if I can avoid it especially if it's an uncut area, because I use it to patch up stuff. Um, if I, like that one, that spot I showed you where I had the bad release. Okay, well, I can just cut out a little piece that'll fit right on that spot, patch it in. It's actually really easy and very, very effective and very clean looking with, the, with a patch like that. You can't really see that there was a flaw there. Let's get all this weeded out. I know you're like, come on, I want to see the foil released on the pants. Well, doing this like this, taking my time, doing the weeding while you all are watching, is allowing those other pairs of jeans to cool off so I can show them to you. I can't show them to you until they're cool enough for me to pull the adhesive off of. And again, I just pull all these bigger chunks off. I stick them, if I have a piece of sticky backing like I did from the other piece, um, I can stick this to the old sticky backing up from the other peeled off piece like this stuff because I just like to keep all these little shreds of stuff in one place because I don't like them flying around the studio. They show up in weird places. I mean, it's bad enough I've got glitter everywhere. Let's try not to ruin everything. A little, little piece of dog hair from my pants. Okay. All right. Now, obviously, I have crud on these pants, which makes it all the easier for me to determine um, that I can put like a design on the ankle because I'll just bury that mess that I made on there. All right. So you can see it's mounted here. Now we just got to get it cleared. I appreciate all you sticking with me through this. I know this is kind of a longer one. Um, we're going on close to an hour now, but we're getting towards the end. All I'm doing is just melting this stuff and we're going to uh, release foil on it. I guess I should get another piece of foil while that's melting. And I'll do the back of the legs of these pants. You're not gonna have to sit through that with me. Now that I have a scissor, I can actually cut the foil. Um, and a lot of times when we ship out product, you might find that you've got like scraps of foil in there. Don't throw those away. Those are how we get you 
little samples and stuff in your own hands of uh, new foils and new products like that. Yeah, that's not wanting to stick right there. Um, especially to people who I know foil a lot, like people who are constantly buying foils for me, I always make sure they get foil scraps. If you don't want foil scraps in your, your order, you know, tell me, I won't send them to you. If you do want them, let me know. If I have any, I will pack them. All right, there we go. There's, you can see there's a little moisture on there. I hit the steam button by mistake. It does nothing, don't do that. It's not gonna help. I hit it by mistake. So now I'm going to just lay lay on this for a few minutes. Well, not for a few minutes, but for about 30 seconds. Heat up the glue again enough so that everything sticks. I'm going to move my iron around to make sure I get all the spots. But I am putting pressure on here, which is generally why I like the trouser press better because I don't have to lean on it. But jeans are tough in the pre in the press. They don't get enough pressure. But I do see my pattern grabbing on here, so we looking good. And I don't, I, I don't think the camera will pick it up. Might just a little bit, but my pattern has grabbed here. Um, oh yes, Belinda, good to know about the scraps. Yes, I'm not sending you my garbage. <laughs> we recycle all our packing material that comes in and out of the studio because it's more environmentally sound and it helps us keep our shipping costs down. But when we send you scraps of foil, we're not sending you garbage. We're giving you a gift. We want you to have it, to try it, to see how you like it. All right, so this is the first one we did. Let's hope that I got a good release because, you know, not everything goes perfectly. Okay, so right here, I didn't get a great one, but it's really good everywhere else. And why didn't I get a great one here? There's a little wrinkle, there's the seam pocket right there. But look how well that released everywhere else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a part that I did not hit with the iron before. Um, don't use foil that you've already put heat to. It won't do that, it won't work. But I can take a piece of foil that I did not have heat applied to already and it will re as long as I do this with the iron and reheat the adhesive a little bit, it will grab on here and we'll have a better foil release. So we got an excellent one all except for that one spot, but look how great that is. And this is what I meant by um, animal print becoming a textural element. As opposed to seeing it as a clear animal, it can be uh, used to create dimension and color. Um, can a heat press be used? Set, yes. The answer is yes. Set it to 325. Start heating your um, adhesive for about three to five seconds. Go a little longer if you need more. All right, here's the fish, and I know this is going to release well. I can already see it. Oh, yay! And it did not miss one little spot. Now there is a cool release. And you wanna know how good it is? The release is so good, I got nearly a perfect release from it on the foil. Look at that. Now how cool is that? Look how beautiful that betta fish is. I'm really happy with it. Oh, I'm so thrilled. And a uh, quick reminder, everybody, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle our videos. Uh, share the love. We're doing a contest starting this week. And it will depend on sprinkling. And if you're wondering why I'm desperately hot, it's because there's an iron and on, and I had to turn off the air conditioner so I didn't blow the fuse. All right, here's our jeans legs. Oh my God. How cool is that? It looks like I put a crown on my jeans. All right, let's peel this one off. 
and I'm going gently and carefully. All right, see right here, that's where no adhesive grab because that's right over by the seam. That's where I was having problems with it. Whoops, we blow, blew a fuse. I knew we were gonna do that. It was getting hot in here. So while my son goes back and throws the breaker, we're gonna finish this a little bit in the dark. This is what happens around here in the summertime. It's hot. We're using a heating element along with air conditioning and we're in an old building. We can blow a fuse. That's all right. He's just going to go in there, flip the breaker back on. It's no big deal. But meanwhile, I'm melting. I'm tur I turn my iron off so that when he uh, turns the breaker back on, we don't blow the fuse again. That would be bad. All right, everybody. I'm going to finish the other side of my leg, you know, where I've got crap on it from before and give every part of my pants crowns. I am so thrilled with how all of this came out. And yep, we fixed that missing leaf on there. Look how cute those are. Up, oh, our lights are back on, yay. I turned the heater off. I'm also gonna turn the printer off. Hang on a second. I have come to learn that if you have too many electrical appliances, even in rusting mode, it will be crappy. So we're all good. I am beyond thrilled. And you saw my son's Cthulhu t-shirt, so it's exactly the same process. Ah, I put my glasses on that were sliding down my nose because that was so hot. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Um, if I missed your question, I will come back and type it in, in the answer. Even if I answered it verbally while you were watching, I will still come back in and type in the answers because sometimes it's easier to find the answers in the right, written comments than it is to scroll through the video. Enjoy this. Do not hesitate to reach out with any other questions you might have. I'm sorry, I'm picking up glue. Um, and we're here for you all the time. Spread the love, do some sprinkling around here. We have a big contest that was gonna depend on your sprinkles. So do not miss this and keep it, keep tuning in. We've got all kinds of fun stuff on the schedule this week. Talk to you soon, everybody. Thank you.